A few things come to mind when I think of Minecraft. Creativity, you betcha. Fun with friends, absolutely. Music, uh, yeah, I sure hope it does. But the one thing I never really associated Minecraft with was speedrunning. I mean, it's not really a game you think of as having a set start and end. It's all about the journey when it comes to Minecraft. When I think of speedrunning, I think of the world's best, most inventive gamer boys whipping out all the stops to find their way through Mario 64 in the most time-conscious manner possible. Thank you so much for playing my game. I think of massive events like Games Done Quick or GDQ if you're a real gamer. But most importantly, I think of videos that just get like, like a lot, like, like a lot of views. So I clicked on some of those videos to see what they were about, see if maybe I could emulate this formula and make a video about speedrunning that would also get tons of views, like this video is gonna get. Now after clicking on some of those videos, eventually one popped up in my recommended, and it was a Minecraft run, so immediately I had to click. Um, of a guy doing a run at GDQ this year. The runner, Illumina Elite, which is a certified gamer name, beat the whole game start to finish in just one hour. This run used no glitches and it was a random seed, so he had to drop into the world, figure out where the heck he was, get all the necessary stuff needed to kill the Ender Dragon, which is like really hard to acquire, get in there and kill the thing. Now an hour sounds like a lot of time, uh, but if you've ever played Minecraft, you know an hour can fly by. And when you think of all the stuff he needed to do to get there, I mean like I have never killed the Ender Dragon. So seeing someone do that in less than an hour is inspiring, but also extremely demotivating and depressing. Now before we get into everything, let me first remind you what it takes to beat Minecraft. First, you're gonna need another portal. This means you need 10 obsidian, and unless you have fancy bucket skills or crazy good luck, most players are gonna need a diamond pickaxe for this, along with a few other things. Then once you're in the nether, you have to go and kill blazes like your life depends on it. It, it doesn't, relax. Now you need to acquire 16 blaze powders because you need at least four eyes of ender to find the end, and then. And 12 to repair it. Now, I hope this whole time you've been killing Endermen because you're gonna need 16 plus of their eyes to get into the end. Oh, and they don't drop every time you kill them, so buckle up. All right, so you've done all that and now you're finally ready to get into the end, right? Wait, you remember to be collecting beds this whole time, right? You didn't? Okay, go kill some sheep and uh, remember, they deserve it. Water sheep is inside each and every one. Now, beds are important because the Ender Dragon is a very, very sleepy boy. Now go in there, give him some beds, put him to sleep, and then you beat the game. Now, look at the clock. Notice how it says 3 a.m.? Uh, that's because you're not a speedrunner. But if that was fun for you, you might have what it takes to be a speedrunner. Now, when it comes to Minecraft speedrunning, there are basically four categories built upon two variables. First, you have random seed versus set seed. Random seed basically means you get a totally new world that is created when you start the run. This is much more difficult than set seed because every time you drop in, you don't know where anything is, so you have to be ready to think on the fly. Everything is improvised and you have to be super creative. Now, this runs super popular in Japan for some reason, and tons of traditions stem from their playing style. They love to do these runs in hardcore, just to add to the challenge, and they love to turn the coordinates off, because, say it with me, they're true. true. Gamers. Second up, there is Set Seed. Now, these are much more standardized because everybody's going into the same map. You already know where everything is, and it's going to be a lot easier to acclimate yourself to the environment every time because you're basically doing the same thing. Now, don't get me wrong, some things are still random, like mob spawns and item drops, but for the most part, these runs look pretty similar every time. This is very obvious when you compare the times because for the Set Seed, the record is just under six minutes, and the world record for Random Seed is just under 27 minutes. Now, in those runs, you follow all the rules, but on the other side of things, there are glitched runs in which you can use any exploits to beat the game as quick as possible. These runs are built around using certain glitches, mainly pertaining to duplicating items and killing the dragon faster to beat them as quick as possible. And these runs are much, much quicker than glitchless runs, with the random seed world record being just under eight minutes and the set seed being just under two minutes. Now these runs are crazy to watch because while they're not as creative and inventive as the other ones, the people playing are constantly closing the game, exiting to the title screen and then resuming the timer it is like watching the world's most indecisive player play through Minecraft. All right, time to play some Minecraft. Let's get into it. Yeah, you know what? I'm bored. All right, never mind. I'm gonna go back in. Let's let's play some Minecraft. Oh, never mind. I'm bored. All right, fine. I'm gonna buckle down, and play some Minecraft. Maybe we'll get some. Nope, I'm, I'm I'm quitting again. Now here are the four main categories, but there's a few more because some people like to take it just a step further. The fastest run in history, I believe, was done in just 95 seconds, but this wasn't done at even close to full speed. This player used a program called TAS, 
which is short for Tool Assisted Speedrun, to slow down the game speed and let you do intricate moves much more easily. Using TAS allowed a user to beat the game in just 95 seconds, which is insane to think about. Uh, hey Jared, uh, the Uber's gonna be here in two minutes. You ready? Yeah, I'll be there in a second. Uh, just let me play through Minecraft real quick. Now, the reason I took time out of my day to make this video uh, is not actually chasing views. It's because I find the world of Minecraft speedrunning to be extremely interesting and so different from speedrunning in any other game I've ever seen. You're not worried about building the perfect house. In fact, everyone who does these runs doesn't even bother to build a house. It's a totally different way of playing the game, and in comparison to other speedruns, games tend to have a predetermined start and finish. They have levels to beat, they have a end scene with credits, and while we do have that, it's not something that's obvious from the start. For years, I didn't even know how to beat Minecraft. In Minecraft, there's just a world, a world to explore and exploit for sure, but the start and finish is more of a blurred random line than it is in your typical game. It brings out some of the most creative moves I've ever seen in speedrunning, and I believe it deserves more attention. If you haven't already, go check out a speedrun. You'll probably learn something new, I know I did, and you'll probably have a blast doing it. Thank you guys for watching. This has been Meraki. Bye-bye.